Hello again. Hi friends. How are you? I hope you're having a great day and it's Mrs. Schreiber again. We're getting ready to get started doing some text structures today. So before we get started, let's watch this Go Noodle to get ourselves calm, alert, and ready to learn. From mindless to mindful. To be mindful is to let your attention rest on this moment, on just right now. Let's practice being in the moment. Your body is still right now. Can you feel that? Your breath is moving in and out of your nose. Can you notice that? Rest one hand on your chest. Can you feel your breath? Move that hand to your belly. Notice breath there. Can you feel that? Bring your hands around to your back. Breath might be moving there. Feel that? This bell is ringing right now. Can you hear that? Where is your attention? Did it wander? It's okay. That's what minds do. Let's practice a little bit more. Now this bell is ringing. Can you hear that? This green dot is still. Can you see that? Some of the other dots are moving. Notice that and then focus your attention on the very still dot. Return your attention to your body. Hands, they're still. Can you feel them? Feet are still. Can you feel them? You are here right now. Can you feel that? In this moment, you are mindful. Do you notice that? There are moments in your day when you can practice being mindful. When you are reading, just read. When you are tying your shoe, just tie your shoe. When you are chewing your food, just chew. Your mind can be full of one thing, one moment at a time. All right, now that you're calm, alert, and ready to learn, let's get started. So we're gonna go into our word work again. And we, I know we've been practicing with that schwa sound that we learned at um, last time. And it was with an A and it made an U short, a short U sound like uh. Today we're gonna to continue working with the schwa sound but it's a little bit different. So I want to say some words and I want you to think about what you notice about those words. What do they have in common? And so I'm gonna say the word and then you can shout it out and repeat after me. And if you wanna do a little silly voice, you can do that too. I'm sure your family would love to hear all those sounds. Plate, now you say it, plate. Relate, now you say it, relate. Nate, now you say it, Nate. Private, now you say it, private. Kate, now you say it, Kate. Late, now you say it, late. Pirate, now you say it, pirate. Chocolate, now you say it, 
chocolate. Fortunate. Now you say it. Fortunate. Skate. Now you say it. Skate. Are you noticing anything about these words we've read? I'm sure you are. Keep going. You're doing a great job. Desperate. Desperate. Now you say it. Desperate. Ultimate. Now you say it. Ultimate. Locate. Now you say it. Locate. Consider it. Now you say it. Consider it. Mate. Now you say it. Mate. Eight. Now you say it. Eight. All right, so where are you noticing those sounds in these words? First thing that I noticed is they all end in that A-T-E. But do you notice that we hear a different sound? Like in the word plate, we hear that long A sound because of that magic E on the end. We hear a long A in plate. But in a word like private, we don't hear that same A, long A sound. We hear what almost sounds like an it, an I. And that's that schwa sound again that we're hearing. So where are we hearing those sounds? It's at the end of those words. So we can group these words. How would we group them? How do you think we would group them? Well, we can group them by that long A sound, like we would hear in plate. And we can group them by that schwa sound, that it sound that we hear in like private. So remember we're hearing, looking for the long A, like A, where it says its name. And then we're also listening for that I sound, like as in private. So I'm going to say some words and I'm going to have you shout out where you think that the, which category that you think that that would be in. Long A, shout that out or the schwa, sound that out. So plate, where would we hear that sound? Is it long A or is it the schwa, plate? In three, two, one. That's right, it's a long A, plate, okay? How about this word, relate? Relate. In three, two, one. If you said long A, you are correct. You hear that relate. You can hear that long A. How about Nate? Nate. In three, two, one. That's right. It was still a long A sound. Nay, A. We hear the A say its name because of that magic E on the end. Let's try another word. How about private? Private. Do you hear a long A or do you hear that schwa sound? Three, two, one. That's right. We hear that schwa and it's that new sound and it's the A making that I sound like a short I. How about Kate? Kate. In three, two, one. That's right, it's that long A. So we hear A in Kate. You can hear that long A sound because of the magic E on the end. How about late? Which column do you think it belongs in? Three, two, one. That's right, it's that long A, late. You can hear the A say its name. How about this word, pirate? Pirate, which column do you think it belongs in? In three, two, one. That's right, it's the schwa sound, that I, it. We're hearing that pirate. How about this one? Chocolate, chocolate. Three, two, one. That's right, 
in that schwa sound where it's the I, the short I, it. How about fortunate? Fortunate. Three, two, one. That's right. We're over here in that schwa sound again, that I. Try another one. Skate. Skate. Which column do you think it belongs in? Three, two, one. That's right, it's that long A sound. Good job, you guys are doing a great job and keep it up. How about desperate? Desperate. Three, two, one. That's right, it's that I sound, so it belongs in the schwa column. Let's try another one, ultimate. Ultimate. Three, two, one. That's right, ultimate is that I sound. The A-T-E is making that I sound. How about locate? Locate in three, two, one. That's right, it's making that long A sound, as in locate, A, you hear that long A. How about considerate? Considerate in three, two, one. That's right, you hear the it sound on the end of that word. What about the word mate? Mate in three, two, one. That's right, you hear the long A, mate. The long A made by that magic E on the end. And our last word, eight, eight. In three, two, one. That's correct, it's that long A sound again. Good job, you've worked really hard on our word work today. So let's move on to our fluency passage. So remember, for our rules of fluency, we wanna read smoothly, we wanna read with meaning, we wanna read with expression, and we wanna read at just the right speed. Not too fast and not too slow. Today, we're reading a poem called The Chocolate on My Plate. Now, we were looking at those words just a few minutes ago with our word work and thinking about listening for the A-T-E sounding with that long A like plate and the schwa sound with the it, that short I sound like as in chocolate. So as we're reading through this, think about the words that we're hearing that have that A, long A sound like as in plate and then that short I sound that chocolate makes in the A-T-E at the end. So read it with me. I had some chocolate on my plate. I felt so fortunate. I'm sure you can relate. One day I went to skate with my friends, Nate and Kate. When we got back home, it was really quite late. I was ready for that chocolate. It's the ultimate dessert. But things turned desperate. I was unable to locate my private chocolate bar that had been sitting on my plate. Who ate my chocolate? A pirate and his first mate? Oh, now I remember. I had been a considerate friend and shared it all this morning with Nate and Kate. So let's point out some of those words. If you see them, Either point to the screen or shout them out. Chocolate, plate, fortunate, relate, skate, Nate, Kate, late, chocolate, we hear that I sound again, ultimate, desperate, locate, private, chocolate, plate, Chocolate, pirate, mate, considerate, Nate, and Kate. So again, we can see all those words in our poem just like we've been practicing. Good job. Thanks so much for working hard. Let's get started on our reading lesson, and we're going to focus on text structures. So our standard that we're going to look at is RN 3.2. And it says to identify how a nonfiction text can be structured to compare and contrast, to describe a procedure, and to explain a cause and effect relationship. 
So we're going to get started here with our I can statement. I can identify text that use compare and contrast and cause and effect. So before we need to review a little bit about our text structures because there are a couple different kinds. And a text structure is just when we read a passage, oftentimes an author uses one of these text structures. They either are describing something, they're using a sequence or chronological, and it's an order of events from start to finish. So we would use some words like first, next, then, last. A compare and contrast would be telling what something is alike, how two things are alike, and then how two things are different. Cause and effect, when something makes something else happen. And then problem and solution. So you have a problem and then this is how it's solved. So we're gonna focus in on two of them today, compare and contrast and cause and effect. So reviewing a little bit deeper in cause and, or compare and contrast, we're looking at how two or more things are alike, comparing, and how they are different or contrasting. So some things that we would look for, some words that we might see when we're looking for which text structure this is, if they are contrasting, we'll find signal words like different from, however, although, on the other hand, as opposed to, more than or less than, or on the contrary. So those key words will make my brain go bing because I'll need to know man, they're, com they're contrasting. They're talking about two things and how they're different. But telling me how that they are the same, I would find these, co these signal words like similar to, alike, same as, not only but also, resemble, as well as, or the keyword both. So we're gonna be looking for those keywords when we're looking in these passages. So let's read this passage together. Porpoises and dolphins are fascinating and beautiful sea creatures. They are in the group of whales called toothed whales. Porpoises and dolphins are both mammals. Like all mammals, dolphins and porpoises are warm-blooded, which means their body temperature always stays the same. Dolphins and porpoises need to come up to the surface of the water to breathe through the blowhole in the top of their heads. Both porpoises and dolphins are toothed whales. However, porpoise teeth are shaped differently than dolphin teeth. Dolphins have sharp cone-shaped teeth, but porpoise teeth are spade-shaped and flatter. Their bodies are shaped differently too. Porpoises are shorter with more rounded beaks and bodies. Dolphins, on the other hand, have longer, more pointed beaks. Porpoises and dolphins are very interesting creatures. All right, so we're gonna be looking at comparing and contrasting them. And when we do that, we use what's called a Venn diagram. And if you aren't sure what that is, it's the big circles that overlap each other. So in the middle, we're gonna talk about what they are alike or how we are comparing them. And on the outside circles, we would talk about how they are different or contrasting them. So thinking about key words, let's focus in first on how they are alike. So one of the key words that popped out to me was the word both, because I remembered back when we were just talking about them, that both was a word, a signal word that I could use to help me identify how the things are alike. And we're talking about por porpoises and dolphins. So how are they alike? Well, it says that they are both mammals. So I'm gonna highlight the word mammals because that means that they both are the same thing. So that's how they're alike. And then it says, like all mammals, they are both warm-blooded. So that's another way that they're showing us how they are alike. The next sentence says that dolphins and porpoises need to come up to the surface of the water to breathe, and they use the blowhole. So they both have a blowhole in the top of their head. Then the next sentence says, both porpoises and dolphins are toothed whales. So that means they just both of them have teeth. So I'm going to put down toothed. I'm gonna highlight that word too because that's still something that's telling me how they are alike. Now the next sentence starts off with the word however, and then it says that they have different shaped teeth. So now we're talking about how they're different. So I'm gonna stop there because I wanna add these things to my graphic organizer. So coming in here, this is my Venn diagram, like I was just talking about, it's two big circles and they kind of overlap. So the things in the middle are telling us how they are alike. So how are porpoises and dolphins alike? 
Remember, they are both mammals. We also noted that they were both warm-blooded. They both have a blowhole. And they're both toothed, meaning they have teeth. So now we need to go back in and find out how they are different. So remember, we're going to look for how dolphins are different and put that here and how porpoises are different and put that over here. So looking back at my passage again, we came down to here and it started talking about however. So that's another signal word for Mrs. Schreiber to know that they're about to tell me something different. So the next sentence says, porpoise teeth are shaped differently than dolphin teeth. Dolphins have sharp cone-shaped teeth, okay? So dolphins have one kind of teeth, but porpoise teeth are spade-shaped and flatter. Okay, so that's something to make sure I remember. So dolphin teeth are sharp and porpoise teeth are spade shaped. Their bodies are shaped differently too. So here's another difference between the two. Porpoises are shorter with more rounded beaks and bodies. And dolphins on the other hand, that's another keyword, the signal words have longer, more pointed beaks. So I'm, I'm, I have two differences. One is how they have different sized teeth, shaped teeth, and one is about how long or short they are and about their, bo their bodies. And then the last sentence just tells us that they're very interesting creatures. So if I was actually looking at the main idea, I would probably tell you that the main idea was that they are interesting creatures from the sea. So looking over here, Porpoises' teeth are spade-shaped and flatter, so I'm adding this to my graphic organizer. Put a little bullet point. <clears throat> and I know that dolphin's teeth were cone-shaped and sharp. Okay, so I've got my differences in the outer box, in the outer um, circle. And then I also noticed that porpoises were shorter with more rounded beaks and bodies, and dolphins had longer and more pointed beaks. So I didn't know some of those facts about dolphins and porpoises and didn't know that many differences. So now I hope you've learned a little thing about them too. All right, so let's look at our last text feature, which is cause and effect that we want to focus on today. Remember, a cause is the event and the effect is what happened because of the event. So because it's raining outside, there might be a rainbow or the flowers grow. So while we're reading this, I want you to be thinking about what is the cause, so there's something that is happening, and then why it happened, the effect. While many had believed the Titanic was unsinkable, it floundered on April 15th, 1912. Although it looked like the underneath, or although it looked like the ship would miss the iceberg because bergs are wider underneath, the ice scraped the ship under the water, causing several holes. Even though watertight compartments could take in water and the ship would stay afloat, only four could be flooded. Water spilled through the compartments, causing five to be flooded and ultimately the Titanic to sink. So looking at our graphic organizer, we have the cause, why did it happen? And then the effect, what happened? So my cause, I oftentimes, in my mind, I think about like the because. Because this happened, this is what happened after that. So because the Titanic hit an iceberg, so that's what happened there. What did it, why did it happen? Because the iceberg, it hit an iceberg, the Titanic sank. All right, let's practice one more. Students are not allowed to chew gum in my class. While some students think that I am just being mean, there are many good reasons for this rule. First, some irresponsible students make messes with their gum. They may leave it on the bottoms of desks, drop it on the floor, or put it on other people's property. Another reason why I don't allow students to chew gum is because it's a distraction. When they are allowed to chew gum, students are more worried about having it popping it, and snapping it when they are listening, writing, reading, and learning. This is why I don't allow students to chew gum in my class. I'm sure none of you would have any problems with these things and could probably chew gum in class. So thinking about that, why did it happen? So, 
and what happened. So what is the what happened here? I can think through and think about the what happened is that I didn't want them to chew gum in my class. And what are my reasons why? So because students make messes and gum is distracting, chewing gum isn't allowed in my classroom. All right, so you have something to practice as well. I gave you a passage and you can practice cause and effect just like we did. And I have another passage for you to practice our compare and contrast. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate all your hard work. You have done an amazing job this entire time over the summer, and I hope you've learned a lot as we've been going through every lesson. Remember, our secret word for today is dolphin. That's dolphin. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your summer.